Tiny. Are you ready to react? <laughs> I am. Good as new. I am so excited about this, bro. <laughs> Inside the cab, you don't you don't power wash in there, right? <laughs> How do I charge it when I kill the battery? I'll leave this the kill switch here. Dude, this will be great. I'll see yeah. you in a little bit. Come on, check out the excavator. Hey, no rocks. <laughs> no. We don't know where that dirt's been, Kona. You think the Ryobi can handle this? Yeah, we got heavy duty on our side. I'm super pumped to clean this thing up today. Today, I'm gonna do something a little different. Instead of using all of my power washing gear and, you know, fancy powerful systems, I'm gonna tackle this craziest, biggest job we've ever done with a $100 Ryobi power washer. And we're gonna see what it takes to get this thing clean. We're gonna use my heavy duty degreaser and wash, and we're gonna use the IKE Foam Pro 12. That thing's gonna be a great application tool for the soap and the Ryobi will be a great way to rinse it off. I think it'll be a really nice setup actually as well because I'll be up on my scissor lift and I can have the power washer right there with me. I'll run my hoses and power right up to the scissor lift and we'll just get this thing as clean as we possibly can. Let's get the Ryobi opened up and see what we got. Oh my God, it comes with a tiny little foam can. I love the graphics on this thing. Blue and red, man. That's what I'm all about. A hundred bucks, can you even believe it? Got a nice little lance here. I don't know what kind of quick connect that is, but we're gonna be stuck using this, that's for sure. I mean, for the price, it's pretty impressive, I gotta say. This looks like a 22 millimeter screw coupling to me. I bet we can adapt different things onto this if we want. I can't imagine that there's much danger involved with this, but we'll see. Yeah, it looks like you insert and twist. Oh yeah, that's a good long length. It's actually pretty uh, worthy. We'll use this gun, but we could use different ones. This is called a front entry gun. So it has the inlet right here instead of down back here. And here we have the hose. Oh my God, this hose is so tiny. It's smaller than an extension cord. 2000 PSI. Yeah, that's what a 22 millimeter screw coupling looks like. Gently. I think this is 25 feet long. I've got one nozzle right here. This is a 15 degree by 1.7 orifice. So the first two numbers are the degree pattern. Yellow is always gonna say 1.5 at the beginning of the code. And the last two or three numbers are the size of the hole, the orifice. And that determines how much pressure comes out of the machine. So that's actually very hypercritical, that size of that opening determines everything. So 1.7 is the hole on this, and that's tiny. You can barely even see it, look at that. Put a grain of sand through that thing, barely. Very small. And, uh, oh, this thing is great. 1800 PSI at 1.2 gallons per minute. So in theory, that should run a MTM Hydro PF22, but I doubt that this runs 1800 at 1.2 together. It's probably one or the other, but we'll find out. Yeah, there we go. This thing is so small. Got yeah, a little garden hose fitting on the back, built-in strainer, and a GFI right on the thing. You definitely want a GFI. You know, you're mixing water and electricity. I mean, that's a great idea. So it looks like if you want a foam, you just have to pop this lance off, and then you can stick this foamer on here. Get the O-ring started first. Looks like you got a pressure relief valve right here. I'm assuming that's what it, that is. It's either that or a soap draw tube. That would be amazing. No high pressure swivel on this guy. You probably don't need it because the hose is so so flexible. What's in here? Looks like we got two screws. Oh, we got a handle. Oh, this is like the world's littlest baby turbo nozzle. Look how cute it is, man. Oh, you can't even blow through it, the hole's so small. <laughs> oh, this must be a strap to like hold the hose. That's actually really nice. 
Important instructions. Use soap applicator to apply detergent. Mix detergent at the ratio specified by the detergent manufacturer. So I'll specify that. If you don't already have one of these, you need one. Definitely grab yourself one of these bad Larry's. The amount of times that I use this thing per day is unfathomable. Uh -huh. Okay, let's get this thing hooked up and see what the heck happens. This little guy right here, that's what I use to quick connect my stuff on, man. So I'm curious to fire this thing up, and I want to read the pressure and take the flow on this thing. So I don't know if we're really getting 1800 or 1.2 or... Let's see what we get. So this is a pressure gauge, 5000 PSI. Uh, the problem is it's got these QC fittings on it, and this is all 22 millimeters. So we're going to adapt them over. Let's throw that on there like that. Oh yeah, man, that's a 22 millimeter screw coupling all day long. Yep. And now this adapter, this will go from QC back into the, the original thread. So now we've got ourselves a nice little 5,000 PSI overkill gauge there. So I want to take the pressure at this point at the outlet and then after the hose, because the hose offers a little resistance in itself, loses a little pressure over, over the distance of 25 feet I'm wagering. I already have a built-in GFI in this outlet on this circuit, so there's potential that this GFI and my GFI might kind of trip each other out a little bit. I can't believe that they say three quarter minimum hose, man. I don't even spec that out for my three and a half gallon per minute monster machines. The moment of truth. I love the auto off. <laughs> I think it's going to be challenging to clean this excavator. So we're getting 1100 PSI out of the machine at the outlet of the machine. Let's see what we get with this nozzle. We're getting 1,400 PSI, not, not 1,800. I mean, that's at the outlet here, so let's try this. Now we'll just hook this up right here. This should work out pretty good. All right, now we can read what we get for pressure here. I'm real curious to see what the drop is. Now let's see what we get. Fourteen hundred PSI with the yellow chisel. And now let's see what we get out of this. One thousand. Less pressure coming out of this guy, but probably more flow. Well, let's measure the flow next and see where that stands, and maybe we'll find out something, I don't know. I bet you we get a little more water out of this one. This one probably still hits harder though, just because it's a zero degree that's spinning, that's gonna have more surface impact than a 15 degree spreading out the pressure a little bit. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, so this is a, a bucket with some measurements on it. And what this will tell us is exactly how much water over the course of one minute comes out of this thing. So we'll just have to time it for one minute with the normal nozzle, and then we'll time it for one minute with the, uh, the other nozzle, whatever one's normal and whatever one's not, I don't know. This thing's a little dirty. Let me rinse it out real quick. estimation that this turbo nozzle will put out more flow than the other. We'll have to measure it three times. No nozzle, turbo nozzle, and standard yellow nozzle. So let me put my timer on here. One minute. What do we got here? Just a smidgen over four quarts, which I believe would be one gallon. Let's try it with the yellow tip. Let's start this test over again. Dang it, I touched the bucket, now it's all wobbly. I'd say that's pretty much, it was a hair over four quarts before, so I think flow is actually pretty similar between these two nozzles. Even though the pressure was lower, I would have thought the gallons per minute would have gone up on the turbo nozzle, being that it's putting out lower PSI. Let's find out now at zero PSI how many gallons per minute. Maybe we'll come up with a 1.2 there. What do we 
got? Damn, that's almost two gallons. How are they getting that 1.2 out of there? Let's say it's 1.1, then that should run a MTM Hydro PF22 foam cannon. Let's see what happens when we hook up one of those. All right, so the only thing I wanna see real quick is you know the foam quality. They come with this little foam cannon here, and maybe we'll use this to inject my soap all over this excavator. I'm just curious if this power washer can run an MTM Hydro PF22.2. This is the soap I'm gonna use today to wash the excavator down, so this should be pretty helpful. We're gonna use this soap both in the foam cannon and in the pump sprayer on this whole thing. So the advantage with the pump sprayer is gonna be that we can use this pretty much undiluted, ready to rock and roll, and that's gonna do the most work for us on this thing. Now we're gonna test a small spot just to make sure nothing funny happens to the paint. I usually have very good luck though, so we'll see. But we'll always do a small spot first to make sure. The goal of the ratio is that if you can cut it further and still be happy with what it's doing, then that's what you do. You don't necessarily have to use it straight up. But then again, like for me, I've got a warehouse full of it, so I might as well. For the most part, I think we'll run either straight up or 50-50, just so that the soap can do the work. Yeah, get it in there. Success. Same thing in here, you could cut this with water in the cannon, or you could tell the cannon to add water for you. And that's what I'm gonna do on this one, because I need full strength on this wash. It's still gonna be coming out weaker than my pump sprayer, because this is gonna dilute with water as it comes out. It's gonna make it stretch a little further, it's gonna help you cover bigger areas. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, that's nice foam. Check this out. It's like nicer foam than my power washer normally gets. All right, that's real good. I'm happy with that. Let's see what this foam can and this little guy goes for. Let's see. Okay, this is a soap injector, not a foam can. One thing about these lower gallon per minute machines is they will slow you down. You know, the, the gallons per minute determines how fast you can get something done. The pressure is always adjustable. You know, like my machines I normally work with are three and a half gallons per minute. You don't have to use all 3,000 psi that I normally pump out of one of those. You can put any nozzle you want in there, chop that thing down to 1,000 psi if that's what you're comfortable with and still get your three and a half gallons per minute, which would allow you to work fast while being kind of safe on the paint, if that's what you prefer. Some of you may be wondering why this Krenzla 112 11, the Krenzla TS 1122 looks like this, and it's because it wouldn't run that foam cannon as well as that Ryobi just ran that foam cannon. So I decided to have some fun with the thing. It cost me a few views. I had a good video and everybody dropped off right when I was using that thing. It was tripping the breaker on itself constantly. I was un upset about that. Granted, the Krenzla wasn't in 100% condition. It was used and and it was just not really pumping out like it should have. So far, I like this guy way better than that guy. So yeah, we're gonna use this PF22 to soap up the bigger areas on this thing. We're gonna use some, a lot of physical contact on this because it's gonna be just one of those things. This thing's basically gonna be a rinsing tool and a little bit of the pressure is gonna help me get into spots that, you know, are gonna be difficult otherwise. You know, we're gonna get inside of here. We're gonna get inside of here. We're gonna do a fantastic job. I started this thing kind of late today, so I'm gonna come back in the morning with a fresh start. All right, nighty night excavator. All right, I'm all geared up. I got my boots on. It's time to get the grease off of this thing. So there's no way that the Ryobi is gonna handle like this big stuff here. So uh, even with the strongest soap I can throw at it, and I wouldn't wanna do that anyway because grease like this makes a huge mess. You don't wanna splatter that everywhere. Anyway, so what I have to do first is grab a little putty knife and some towels and a trash can. We gotta go over this thing spot by spot. I think due to the scale of this project, I'm gonna do that as I go along. So I'm gonna first tackle this area on ground level, get a feel for it, and then we'll figure out some sort of a rig to get up in the air with my scissor lift. And I think we'll probably bring the power washer and the foamer sprayer up top and all the tools I'll need. And that way I could just work area by area and get this thing all degreased. Let's see what you can do, Ryobi. So Back here, I keep these pack out bins, and these are real helpful. This is the ultimate degreaser. All right, here we go. And let it begin. Heck, maybe I'll throw some gloves on. 
And yeah, man, they're gonna wanna re-grease this thing after I'm done with it, that's for sure. I think the Ryobi is gonna be pretty helpful. We're gonna be able to get the soaps in there, agitate it a little bit, and then the Ryobi has such nice light pressure that I think that it'll be uh, less messy, less kickback, less overspray. Hopefully it has the power to make this thing look good though. If not, I'll be making up that power myself with my hands. Here we have half of one joint. This is gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna go through a lot of paper towels. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. John Deere 190G if you don't value your time. So I've got a lot of the loose stuff busted off of here, but it's gonna be a lot more work. We've got a lot more to do. Hopefully this is the worst area though. Look at this junk. I mean, there is some serious grease on this thing. I stopped even trying to pick it up. But I think we're at a good spot now to get some degreaser on there, let it stew for a minute, and then we'll rinse it off with the Ryobi. So I'm gonna mix down some heavy duty in my pump sprayer, put it on straight. I think that'll do the trick because it's pretty, uh, Pretty thick stuff, man. And this will probably be a good place to see if it has any negative effects on the paint, because the paint's kind of toast here anyway. If there was any issues to come up, I don't think that anybody would even notice. But we got a lot to clean up here. Let's get on it. All right, so heavy duty going in straight up. So one nice thing about these eFoam Pro 12s is that you can turn on the compressor and it'll stay pressurized even if you fill this thing up real high. The thing that I don't like about the e, e Phone Pro 12, well, it's the first off the price tag. This is $255, and that Ryobi that I bought, it was $99. I buy two of those Ryobi power washers for one of these. But for what this does for me, I think it's worth it. The fact that I can put on my degreaser straight up with foam and not ever have to stop because it just stays compressed, that's pretty cool. The other thing I don't like about these is this, like, for some reason, this port ends up sticking out right over this holster, right in the way where I need it to not be. All right, here we go. Kona needs to go out to the bathroom. I'm gonna take her out on a little walk. Give this thing a few minutes to stew. With a little tiny power washer like this Ryobi, so a little extra dwell time is gonna help. I'm probably gonna have to take a couple passes at this thing. I'll get the, the heaviest stuff off on the first pass. We'll try that little turbo nozzle out. We'll have to see what's left. You know, there's a little bit of tar mixed in underneath some of this junk, so we might have to soak it with some citrus. I'll guarantee you one thing though, we're gonna spend a lot more money on soap than we did on the power washer. You're gonna get up there? No. So I want to rig this thing up on the scissor lift. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. The turbo nozzle is like. Yeah. Okay, try this one. And see if you like this better. <laughs> try it out. A little better, right? That thing is tiny. Ninety-nine dollars. I think it's worth it. Ah. Ah. I can Jeez. taste that. Yeah, that's the, that's the good stuff right there. Not doing too bad for $100. I, I'm I surprised. Like this. this yeah. is better than the one I have at my house. It's also like uh, not overwhelming. Like it's easier to operate because it's not kicking that hard. 
This is perfect for someone who just does things at home. Yeah. Still some grease in there, but we'll, we'll keep working on it. Now this thing is all dry. Let's see what we got on this. Thing. Obviously not hitting nearly as hard as like that guy over there would, but man, <clears throat> leaning on the soaps are not doing horrible. So I still have more to do. You know, I got to soak this down again and I'm going to use some agitation. Yeah. And in here, that's not nearly enough. These hose protector sheath things cleaned up pretty good. You can see the haze. Yeah, that cleaned up real good. For not touching it? Heavy duty keeps surprising me on the on the equipment front without touching it. Like it comes real clean. Of course I am using it really strong. What are you thinking, Bob? I think we need to get up higher, man. We gotta figure out a solution to be able to get hands on with the rest of this thing. This looks so clean though. Look at the grease on that cylinder up there. Oh my God, that is filthy. Dude, it's everywhere. Here you go, good sir. Thank you. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to run this thing, bro. I'm gonna turn on the power for you. We gotta prop that thing up with something for safety. I know just the thing. I think that works. As long as we're safe, bro. Oh yeah, we'll be able to get up here so much easier. We're still gonna need the scissor left, but it'll be a nice comfortable height, you know? Now we can get at this real good. That's perfect. Let's set up the scissor lift so that we can get up top here. Yeah, let's make a little more room on this thing. Oh, this is gonna be so nice. Oh yeah. Ooh, that looks good. That's tight. Toy. Oh, look at that. This will be the grease this trash. This is recycling. Now. The grease trash? Yep. We're making a high altitude grease assault vehicle. The spoke brush looks perfect for working on this thing. What do you think? I think it's amazing. It's already the color of grease, too. There is so much. Oh, should on. I let it fall? No. Ah! Do not let Kona touch that. Yeah, she would be all over that. I remember uh, one of the first videos I've included Kona in. Somebody in the comments was like, you lost me at the German Shepherd. I'm a no-nonsense kind of guy. I'm like, <laughs> what? All right, goodbye. <laughs> You're full of nonsense, Kona. He no longer subscribes because of your nonsense. I wonder how many people watch the videos because of Kona. All of them. It's the Kona show, bro. Oh, I almost got it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, ah, she won. <laughs> Check out this aerial rig that we put together. I got my heavy duty straight up, ready to go. And then I got my rinse station here and a place to put all the grease and my wipeouts because I'm going to probably get all greasy all, all I'm up there. So my plan is to be able to tackle the upper areas super easily and make it a very streamlined process getting this thing nice. I might leave this scissor lift set up like this for roof work because it's going to be kind of nice to have a tiny little power washer just running up there. I think this is going to be super cool. Uh, let's get up onto the aerial work now and have some fun up there. According to down there. I think you should brush it. You think so? Yeah. I have like the world's smallest brush up here. You want me to go make one? You should go make one, bro. So one like this, you think? This big? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm on a mission to make Bob a new tool. Yeah, this is what we want. Make him a nice short handle to go on this. Let's see. This is gonna be a pretty big brush though. We should sell these, to be honest. Let's see what I can do about this end. Oh, there's no way. I think it does fit. 
We'll put this random fitting on the end of it. Gotta make it look good. Staying on there pretty tight too. Short brush. Oh yeah, man, grease just sliding right off this thing. I have a gift for you. Oh, bro, this thing is perfect. Holy moly. Dude, I love the end. <laughs> I know, it fits perfectly. Dude, this is the weapon we needed. <laughs> cool, thank you. Check out what we were able to do up here. This came out pretty good. It's still drying, but the uh, paint looks really clean. Maybe a little thirsty, but very, very clean. And we got a surprising amount of the grease off of here. I mean, I am using physical contact up in this neck of the woods. A little bit of degreaser, some elbow grease, and a little Ryobi goes a long way, apparently. We still got some serious work to do in here, though. And moving back into that neck of the woods, we're gonna have like some serious, serious work to do. It won't be too bad once I get to the point where, um, you know, where everything's degreased, the rest of it'll clean up pretty good. On the home stretch with this boom here this is definitely the most difficult portion of this project so far and it's coming out pretty good i'm just letting the heavy duty soak on there for a few minutes because i think that it's going to need it we're loosening up the stuff and i can't really get in there that good it's tough to reach in there like fully it's not really feasible so i'm leaning more on the power washer to do the work with the soaps look at that go in there huh this has been a project <laughs>
got all this weird chalk here. I don't know what causes this, but it looks like it comes right off. Got my wall. Right, I'm gonna resume this battle in the morning. I think we got the chalkiness off of this paint, which is pretty exciting. What do you think of the progress so far? Hey, leave the Kranzel alone. It's a sacred object. You can't have the Kranzel. No Kranzel for you. Came out pretty good, right? What do you think? Wow. I did not expect that to come out that much better. So now that I know that the heavy duty mixed up like, like it did, did good, I'm gonna keep doing that on the rest of the frame. All of the paint on the frame is kind of chalky looking. So this thing's gonna clean up real nice. It's gonna take uh, just a little bit more effort, but I'm really grateful that we're past the degreasing stage. That took a lot of effort, man. That was way, way much. Yeah, look at how the paint was before. This is what we had on the driver's side beforehand. Wow, cleaned the chalkiness right off of there so now we just got to do a little better job at, at hitting up the corners and stuff because you can still see where I didn't scrub we'll just do a little more detail work on this we'll get all these little spots so yeah this is gonna clean up a lot better so my goal for today is to get all of the frame done on the touch-up 
of everything around the whole frame. It's gonna be a lot of effort there, but it won't be as bad as degreasing everything. Then I gotta wash the paint, which uh, doesn't need much. That'll be pretty easy, but the cab still needs to be detailed. So I got a lot to do today, and at the end of it all, I wanna, th I wanna throw a coat of snake oil on this thing, because it'll be real nice to see it sheeting water, you know, see it all protected. Looks like the paint's pretty dry in general, so I think it'll benefit from some snake oil. So let's get on it. like bucket number 10. time this thing needs to get wrapped up we're not gonna change the rules though we have to only use the Ryobi to get this thing clean so we're gonna call in the troops we need a little bit more help to wrap this thing up promptly what's up guys <laughs> what do you think of that right yeah that was uh, considered a nice power washer before yeah so we got a lot to do the whole frame has this chalk on it see that right there yeah it looks good wet but it has to be scrubbed and you gotta put the soap on real strong and then we rinse it and it looks good. It looks like this after you do that. The tires are pretty good, but you see like around the edges, they require physical contact to get in the treads and get the, you know, the junk off of there. The rule that we have to follow though is we're only using the Ryobi power washer. It, huh? <laughs> are you gonna drive over it? <laughs> You can't drive over the Ryobi, bro. We need it. <laughs> I wonder what we can give away this time. Do you want to make that shorter? No, I want to put it on the Sawzall. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, just right under the blade. That would be actually a really fun invention. Yeah, what are we doing here? Breaking Bob's stuff. <laughs> I don't know where all his tools are. He's got too much, he's got too much stuff going on. Why is it so dark in here? I don't know it's all right. I don't see any lights turning on. <laughs> Sounds like a little uh, thing that cuts turkey. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! He's got so many tools. I think he's got a bigger one somewhere. Well, I can modify this blade for now. What is this sword? <laughs> Alright, so he wants us to scrub it, so I'm thinking. Great idea. Do you have a grinder anywhere? It's got a buffing wheel on it. So if you don't see me in any further YouTube videos, it's because Bob's tired of me wrecking his stuff. <laughs> yeah, 
This brush is for sale, 75% off. Nuts and bolts in it? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if this works, this might be a game changer for the uh, cleaning industry. For the lazy industry. <laughs> lazy industry. <laughs> this right. is actually brilliant, let's, dude. Let's go get kicked out of Bob's shop and show what we made. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> dude, let's go. <laughs> oh, oh, no! <laughs> Dude, this is pro detailer level right here. <laughs> I'm using that pump sprayer. That's just straight up, straight to the surface of the excavator, pure full strength. But when you put it, when you put the soap into a foam cannon, it cuts it like 20 parts water and one part soap, just the nature of a foam cannon itself. Right. So it's coming out a lot more watered down, but that's I, more ideal anyway for like paint like this, you know? Right. Oh my God, look at this, check this out. Dude, we gotta get an 18 volt battery on that thing. We got him on the, on the car. <laughs> Rinse it and see what's left. That's pretty good right there. What do you think? Does it still work? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been quite a bit of oil on the it's floor, so yeah. Like the hole you got in there? Motor windings are crushed, and then the cool <laughs> cooling cover. It probably still works the same as it did before. <laughs> Let's plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. Here we go. All right, the frame on this thing is looking absolutely fantastic. I think we're 100% there. We're gonna move on to the inside of the cab and get that thing all dialed, and then we'll be one step closer to wrapping this thing up. Man, just look at the inside of this thing. We've got a lot to work with in here, let me tell you what. This is the least stuff I've ever had to drag out of the interior. This ain't gonna be fun to put back in.
thing makes some serious fumes.
<laughs> oh, that's so nice. What glass? See, it's looking better too.
it's time to coat this thing with the SiO2. Three quarters water in the foam cannon, one quarter of this stuff. I think this Ryobi is gonna do a fantastic job coating this thing down. This thing's gonna be all slippery. Right now, the water's just sticking to the paint because the paint's a little tired, but it'll it'll sheet water pretty good for uh, the rest of the winter after we put this stuff on there. I wonder how long this is gonna take. I don't think it'll be that bad. It'll just take a while to rinse off. That's the only thing. I should foam on there pretty quick though. All right, here we go. You guys are here to pick this thing up. Let's see their reaction. Dude, are you ready to react? <laughs> I am. Yeah. Nice Matt, to meet you, Matt. Me what do you think? Yeah. Wow. Dude, it's no, gonna it's need awesome. it's gonna need a little grease though. I feel a little bad for yeah. you guys. No, we re-grease them every time. Oh so. good. Not bad, right? That looks yeah, good. They never look this good when we do them. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy yeah, work. It dramatically looks a lot better, yeah. Interior cleaned up good. That took all day yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I didn't use any of my normal power washing gear. The I whole only, I only used the Ryobi. That was my rule. One hundred dollar power wash. This wasn't the machine to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> You're gonna definitely want those two degrees, bro. Yep. <laughs> 